and welcome. This would be a video on how to do an example for uh, the ordered probit and logit models. Before you view this lecture, please make sure that you have watched my initial lecture on how to interpret these models. And now we will watch this example and then we will have some examples of programs in different software that we can use to estimate these models. So the data comes from the Rand Health Insurance Experiment and Deb and Trivedi also used it. The dependent variable for our models would be health status and that is a categorical ordered variable. So we have fair, good, and excellent as the three categories. Uh, notice that they are categories and the names are in words. We use the codes 1, 2, and 3 in the programs to denote which category is, is higher than the other one, but the numbers don't mean much. The way to summarize these is the with percent frequency, because if you take a mean of these, that wouldn't mean anything. So 9% of the people are have fair status, 36% have good status, and 54% have excellent health status in the sample. With uh, three dependent variables, we would be having one set of coefficients and we would have two intercepts separating those three categories. And we will have three sets of marginal effects because we would have estimated the probability of a change in the, deep, in the independent variable on any of the three categories that we have for the dependent variable. Here I have already estimated the ordered logit model and the ordered probit model and these are the coefficients. One thing to notice is that we cannot interpret the magnitude of these coefficients because they differ by scale factor like the binary probit and logit models. Therefore, we don't interpret the magnitudes or, or the values. We only say more likely or less likely. The other point to make here is that unlike the binary probit and logit model where you have more likely outcome of y equals 1 or specific category, here we can have many categories and therefore you would just say more likely to be in the higher categories or lower categories and that's all you can say. So let's interpret the coefficient say on age. As people are getting older, they're more likely to be in the lower categories of health status. Basically, they're not as healthy and both models are showing the same thing. With higher income, you're more likely to be in the higher categories of health status. You, you have a, a better health status. Um, another thing to notice is that the intercepts, there are intercepts uh, showing the cutoffs between the three categories and typically software can also estimate if these uh, intercepts are significantly different from each other. If they are, then the three categories should not be combined into one. So this is a case where in your own data, if you have say 10 categories, it would be very hard for the model to distinguish and between these categories and find any significant results for your independent variables. So in this case, you might be better off to combine some of the categories because if you ask people, do you strongly, strongly agree or do you strongly agree or and so on, you know, they may not be able to make a, a, a very distinct choice. Another point to make here is that if you have, for example, some categories have very, very, very few observations, like less than 3% or something like that, that it will be very hard for the, for the model to run and converge or have any meaningful results for this category. I would suggest combining these categories into one. So if you, even if you've had your survey conducted with five categories, you can combine them down to four and that's how you can estimate the model. So these were a couple side points. Uh, we talked about the coefficients. On the next slide, we will talk about the marginal effects. And they're very similar for the probit and the logit model, the same thing as the binary probit and logit models. Unlike the way that the coefficients differ, the marginal effects don't differ by a lot. So I have only listed here the marginal effects for the logit models. And we would have three sets of marginal effects 
listed here in the three columns and each one of them is for the, ca the category that it represents. So how would we interpret that? If we look at the row of income, we would have the, the one unit increase in income, however it's measured, I don't know the values, that would be associated with 2% less likely being in the fair health status, 5% less likely to be in the good health status, and 7% more likely to be in the excellent health status. Now notice that these numbers do sum up to zero. If you're more likely to be in one category, you're less likely to be in another category so that you get the baseline on, on average. And um, the other thing to notice is that these marginal effects are fairly consistent with the results that we got from the coefficients that higher income leads to m higher likelihood likelihood to be in the higher categories of uh, health status. So they're in the excellent health status. Another thing is that when you estimate your own model, you may get coefficients, or I would say marginal effects here, that are not monotonic. And that's okay. Uh, you know, they don't have to be increasing or decreasing necessarily in, in value. So that's all I had for the example of the ordered profit and logic models. Now let's look into the individual programs on how to estimate these models. Thank you for watching.